Okay, good morning. Hello, uh, my name's Dom Forsham. The company's brand theory, and the, uh, the product is DigiMedia Bank, or just Media Bank. And uh, we're looking to raise 175,000 in equity investment. Bear with me a moment. Okay, so what is the system? And we'll start with that as a good place. It's a storage box. It's a black storage box for digital content. But it's got uh, a key uh, set of differentiators that we feel bring something very interesting to the business market. Bear with me a moment. Dom has made a terrible start. He's struggling with his pitch and can hardly string a sentence together. It stores everything from broadcast quality, satellite television, right through to the smallest Word document, PowerPoint slide, image, sound, you name it. The point about this system is, if it's all in one box, you can deliver it in one message. You can take any of these items, a motion picture to a press release, you've got one presentation, any items in any order on any kind of display, plasma, projector, computer screen, you name it. So, thank you. That's product. Dom has completely failed to explain what makes his black box special, leaving Theo Pafitis with one key question. Dom, sorry, mate. Yes. What do you actually do? What do you do? Okay. What is it? We are a, uh, well, originally we were a, a, a software services and design company, and we moved in 2002 to, to 2000, 2003 to being uh, a tool maker. We, we make creative tools for the, uh, for the creative market. Well, that's, that's made it as clear as mud now. Really? That's okay. as clear as mud. Dom has yet to give the dragons an even basic understanding of his DigiMedia box, which allows the user to access music, video, photos and Word documents on one system. Doug Richard decides to try the direct approach. What is it? What is that box? Right. Here's your choices of types of answers you might contemplate using. Doug, it's a computer with software that we've written that does a lot. Or Doug, it's a banana. Doug, it's a whatever. But what is it? Okay. Without fancy words. Absolutely. It's a computer system. It's running on Windows XP. It is a database tool, a storage tool, that allows you to store all forms of business content. And what have you added right. to that computer? Uh, we've got... Uh, a lot of uh, video uh, hardware in there and we've also written the software as well to, com to connect that seamlessly to our database so that our clients no longer have what they have called, for example, the octopus syndrome. One hand on the DVD player, one hand on the mouse button, another one on the remote control. So you've created an interface that calls on these various bits to display the right thing calling on the right bit At of hardware. At the right time, in the right format. Do yeah. you realize that I had to say to you what I've been asking you to say to me? If that's what you've got, and there's nothing else, I'm a little bit puzzled. Right. For a really simple reason. Because writing a software application that draws on multiple forms of media is right. not a complex activity. Right. I mean, if I wanted to and I was had the sort of free time, even I could, and I'm really a bad programmer. Mm -hmm. There's just so little there. I won't invest in this because you okay. have utterly not persuaded me okay. that there is a meaningful reason for this to exist for any community at all. Right, he's not investing, Dom. I'm, I'm out. He's so. out. Listen, for me, the wheel's going round. The hamster died a long time ago. Right. Right? So I'm out. Okay. I'm out. Don't sure. talk to someone else. Dom's inability to explain his product has tested the dragon's powers of endurance, and he's lost two already. Only three dragons remain, and Dom's hope for a £175,000 investment is on the ropes. Can you tell me Ab how many you've actually sold? The five, five or six units. If I'd sold five of them, 
Yeah. I would know it sold five, and I would right. say it sold five. If it sold six, I would know sure. it sold six. Well, I think it's around half a dozen. The reason I say that is because we're also... Half a dozen. Well, we're, we're, we're currently seeing companies we saw. We've seen a couple of companies last week. We've, we've got no, 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 a sale is when you hand something over and somebody gives you the money. That's a sale. Yeah. We're not seeing companies and, and maybe and maybe's and ifs. Mm -hmm. How many of you sold and had the money? Yeah, we sold, we sold five, five systems. Five systems? Yeah, and I've not got... five or six, five? Uh, no, five systems, yes, that's correct. Okay. Yeah. Getting a straight answer out of Dom is proving tricky. Peter Jones is the next to try. Right. So tell me about Dom. Why, why, why this? Where have you got? How have you right. got here? OK. Because you, know, you must have other things, surely. If you just stuck with this, then I'm bloody terrified. Well, we haven't... Have you just stuck with this? I mean, obviously, we've... We've we left we're school. What did you do? Left school, went to university, didn't yeah, get to university? Yeah, graduate in electronic engineering um, and uh, uh, decided that uh, designing guided missiles was not for me. People, not missiles, need guidance. So I, I kind of got out of that. Have you, so ever, uh, to, have you ever run your own business? Yes, this, this is brand theory, yes. And, and have you been successful at it? We've traded five years. In the first two years, we There's had... There's a question, have you been successful, means a yes or no answer, really. We've broken even or, or made profits, yes, in every year. OK, so you, it's a borderline success from your point of view. I can see what you're trying to do with your product, but it's no more leading edge than, than the collar on my dog. Right. I mean, this is, this is appalling, actually, right. and I'm suffering sitting here just listening to you. OK. Um, and unfortunately, for those reasons, I won't be investing either. Peter Jones is the third dragon out. Only Duncan Bannatyne and Rachel Elnor remain. Don, don't speak to me, just listen to me, OK? Sure. I suffer from insomnia. I can't get to sleep. And I used to count sheep, but I'm going to stop doing that. And I'm just thinking your presentation from now on. That will send me to sleep. Right. I've just been struggling so hard to stay awake. It's just absolutely amazing. Um, so guess what? I'm not going to invest in you. I'm out. Rachel's the last one. It's not an area that I understand particularly. I don't see that there's a market for it. So I'm out. Dom's hopes for investment have been left in tatters. In the end, the dragons thought he'd been wasting their time. This guy is in creative services and marketing. That's him marketing. He's in communications, apparently. Apparently. <laughs> and it, and he didn't turn it on. <laughs> Oh, Dom, I, I sort of felt frustration on your part that somehow you was, weren't getting it across. Well, yeah, I mean, you've got to be careful with sending out the frustration, but it is difficult if, if you're being told, why would anyone buy it? But was it six or five? That was the, one of the sort of first level Well, I think I actually said half it? a dozen, um, but, I mean, yeah, I think it, it is five clients. Now, what was your reaction? Doug essentially dissected the product and said, I could rebuild this and do yeah. everything you're doing. Yeah, I think, you know, Doug made some fair comments, but the reality is... It's not whether you use rocket science to build a product, it's, whether it's what it does and the result of what it does, you know, reinvents processes for customers. And that's clearly what it's doing, really. Many entrepreneurs come to the den with innovations they think will revolutionize a market and make millions. Bob Norburn came in with his ultra shaving cream, promising the smoothest ever shave. It brings shaving out of the dark ages and into the 21st century. But would things go as smoothly as Bob hoped? There is a downside to this product. I've had a cheap disposable blade with a double edge on it that has lasted me eight weeks. What you're saying is, the blade manufacturers don't want to see this product on the shelves because the blades last longer. Yeah. So why don't the blades manufacturer buy this off you and stick it in the drawer so nobody else can sell this product? Do you think you've got enough money to buy eight years of my research and development? I think they have. It's not for sale to be shelved. Peter Jones thought he was far too precious about his invention. I see in front of me an inventor that is totally and utterly emotionally wrapped up in their product. For that reason, I'm out. And Bob's chances didn't improve when he revealed his own fortune. I'm worth about four million. You, you, you have four million pounds? Yep. And you're on here asking us for 150,000? Theo Pafitis was worried he might have more surprises up his sleeve. 
It worries me that if we continue going down this line of questioning, we'll be finding out loads of other things. On that basis, I will not be investing. And the other dragons were quick to follow. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. Even with the dragons behind them, new businesses are always hit and miss. So the dragons hope that when they do get a hit, they'll get a really big profit on their investment. Will William Berry from London convince them he can make millions? He's after £150,000 of their cash. Hi. My name is William Berry. I'm here to talk to you about accommodationforstudents.com, the UK's number one student accommodation search engine. We're looking for £150,000 and we're looking to use this to expand overseas. The idea for the company came three years ago as myself and another student realised that there was a need to help students find the right place to live and the right people to live with. We are currently number one in the UK and we're number one in the search engines and have been for two and a half years. We're number one for student accommodation, student housing, student homes, student flats, student landlords and lots of other associated search terms. This has resulted in us getting 200,000 student visitors every single month, generating a substantial amount of content on the website. We have 15,000 properties on the site, we have 5,000 registered landlords and letting agents and we have 250,000 registered students using the website. We are very much looking forward to the opportunity of working with an experienced mentor to help us take this to the next stage. Thank you very much. William Berry wants £150,000 in exchange for 15% of his company, which advertises property for students. But already Duncan Bannertine thinks he's got his figures wrong. William, it says on here, do you charge your landlords £5 per property per month? That's correct. I think that would come with £740,000. Absolutely. Per let, me, let me clarify. The way that our system works is that uh, landlords upload properties into the site and then they only actually pay for them to be available on the site, obviously, when, when they're empty. So we have 14,000 properties in the site, but they're not always available. So at the moment, I think we have just over 3,000 properties available. Ah, well, that, that, that's very disconcerting. That's, that's very much leading. You, you've got 14,000 properties, but 11,000 of them are already rented out with tenants. Mm -hmm. There's only 3,000 of them are not rented out in a pen. That's, that's true. Yeah. Duncan Bannatyne is disappointed. Despite 200,000 hits on his website every month, the revenue from the landlords is far less lucrative than he'd thought. With such a limited amount of money coming into the business, Peter Jones is already struggling to see any opportunity. I don't see anything here that I couldn't do very simply, very quickly myself if I chose to. The reason why I choose not to do something like this is because I can't see where it's going to generate me income. Uh -huh. How's it going to make money? Uh, well, What's the innovation? If, say, a group of three students are looking for uh, a property and they find a property that's got five rooms, with one click they can create a notice that appears in the housemate section of the notice board saying, we're three students, we've got this five bedroom house, click here to view it with all the pictures, we'd like two other students to join us. That actually diminishes your revenue actually if you think about it, doesn't it? Because it takes the property off the site quicker and therefore reduces... Well, that, that's what we that want sounds to a bit of a kind of chicken well, and egg I mean, thing At the end of the day, say. the landlords are paying us money to, to let their properties, so that, that's what we're, we're going to do. William is failing to impress the dragons. They think his approach to helping landlords find tenants is preventing him concentrate on building a profitable business. Peter Jones has heard enough. It's not a business opportunity. Um, anybody could do this. Okay. There's no innovation, I can't see it, so unfortunately I'm not going to invest in you. Listen, William, I'm going to just tell you um, that I'm out of this. Sure. Can't okay. see. It uh, as a viable uh, investment and, okay, thank and you. I'm out. William, this is not an industry that I'm going to invest in okay. at the moment. Mm. So I'm not going to make an okay. offer, so I'm out. It's a disastrous start for William. With three dragons already out, he'll have to hope he can generate some interest in his website from the two that remain. Doug Richard, who has 20 years experience developing and selling software companies, has just one question. Are you familiar with Craigslist? 
I am familiar with Craigslist, yes, absolutely. And why don't you just tell me what well, you... Well, Craigslist is, uh, it's very quick to use, it's, it's, uh, it's fast and it, it's got good usage. Craigslist is the absolute dominant provider of this kind of activity in every major city in the U.S. across all apartments, not just for students, mm -hmm. and has a loyalty that is extraordinary, which is why they were valued in so many hundreds of millions when they were purchased by Yahoo. Mm -hmm. Quite it's amazing simple. the number of users it gets. Uh, absolutely. Do you know how many it gets? I, I, I don't know the exact number, but I know it's Do you know phenomenal. how much they were purchased for? Uh, I, I know another company, Rent.com, was purchased by eBay for $500 million. What are you going to do? Our, our plan is I might to, be is missing to, something here. No, no. Our, our plan is to, to build up the company and then hopefully to sell to someone like eBay or But Yahoo. first you have to build it up to sell it. Well, we are the number one in the UK. There's no doubt about that. Doug Richard has recognized that William's site is similar to an American website which was recently sold for hundreds of millions of dollars. But has William got the entrepreneurial skills to emulate this success? Have you done anything to try to create money off of this site besides the things you've stated? Have you thought about, well, what else have you thought about other okay. ways to create money from the site if you yep. focus solely on the UK? Sure, we, we've, uh, we've done reverse bill SMS on the, some of the students, so they can put a, a premium notice which allows them to upload pictures and, and extra content, and for that they, they send us a, a £1.50 SMS um, text. Uh, we, we, it's, it's negligible. Uh, what else? What other uh, ideas do you have to create money for this site? I, I've got one other as well. In terms of the landlord hosting, we provide a complete template package for the landlords, and then a site with their own domain name, their own email is generated what for them. What percentage of your landlords use that? Not, not very many at the moment. So far, William's other ideas have failed to generate any real cash for his business. With his years of experience in websites, Doug Richard has a clearer vision of what needs to be done. Here's what I think has to happen. I think you need to be extremely efficient about acquiring every landlord that it's possible to acquire in the UK. Right. You have to find ways to keep landlords. Mm -hmm. You have to find ways to create marginal revenue. Mm -hmm. And what I do agree with is all the things you're doing to keep students at no cost, because they are the fodder for the landlords. And it's exactly how Craigslist and the others have gotten right. there. Right. So if I were to participate, mm -hmm. It would be with an understanding now that would not change that this would become a site whose sole goal is to do a land grab for the landlords. Doug Richard has come up with the strategy needed to take Williams' business into a different league. At the moment, the company is making little money, and Doug Richard is not going to be content with the 15% stake William is offering for a £150,000 investment. Pre-money valuation, 850000 Do we agree on that? Yes. I think that valuation has, bears no resemblance to where you are at this moment in the market. But I'm willing to put up half of the money, 75 k for 30% of the company. Just to clarify, are you saying that you want 30% uh, for the 75,000? That's precisely what I'm asking. Okay, okay. And the reason I've set the valuation there is because if I've done my sort of back of napkin calculation here, this site could be worth a very nice amount of money in a very short period of time if we successfully capture all the landlords mm -hmm. and then flip it to somebody else within the next two to three years. Right, yep and that you will still end up quite wealthy on a minority interest. In an incredible turnaround, William has been offered half the money he needs, but Doug Richard has demanded a massive 30% stake to transform his website into a multi-million pound business. Will Theo Pafitas be convinced by Doug Richard's vision and put in the rest of the cash? William. You need me a lot more than I need you, by miles. I see. Mm -hmm. Which is why I'm going to make you an offer. Oh, that's surprising. I will match uh, Doug's offer mm -hmm. 
which gets you to the 150,000 you're looking for. William has got the cash he needs, but he'll have to give away a majority stake in his business. Will he be willing to sacrifice this much equity in order to get two dragons to make his company a multi-million pound success? Okay, I mean, unfortunately, um, there's no way that I can go from 15% to, to 60%. Ben, don't start at 15 next time. Okay. I mean, I, I, can, I do have some leverage, but I, I can't go that far. I figure if you take our deal and you work on this night and day, as hard as you can, in 24 months, you could walk away with about 4 million pounds in your back pocket. Mm -hmm. That's what I figure. Right. I'll bet you don't have 4 million pounds in your back pocket right now. How old are you? 29. 29. Mm -hmm. So you'd be 31 and you'd have 4 million pounds in your back mm -hmm. pocket. That sounds good. Would you respect us if we agree to give you 150,000 pounds for 15%? Well, you know, I mean, I, I truly believe in this business model. I, I've put in a lot of effort and, and served the other people involved. And, and, and as far as we're concerned, you know, it, it's something that we truly believe in. So, I, I mean, I, I personally think that that's, that's a I great might consider. I might consider 25%, mm -hmm. and that's assuming that Doug feels the same way, mm -hmm. and we can get the assurances that we need. Mm -hmm. If we're not talking the same ballpark, then I'm afraid you will not be getting investment from me and Doug, and we can all move on. In order to keep the deal alive, the Dragons have lowered their demands to 50% for £150,000. Will William also be prepared to compromise? OK, well, I think to clarify, I, I can't give away any more than 25%, so it doesn't sound like we're going to conclude a deal. I'm out. OK, thank you very much for your time. I would love to have invested in you, but you've mm -hmm. put me in a position where I actually have to ask for a great deal of equity. I'm out. All right, thank you very much. Thanks for your time. William is leaving the den empty-handed. Two Dragons offered him the cash he came for, but he was unwilling to sell such a huge share in his company. It's not fair to try and take 60% off the guy. I don't think that's fair. No. The question is not oh, how much you own, it's how big the pie gets. And there is more than enough opportunity yeah. in here for Rachel, him to Rachel, walk away Rachel, wealthy too. Rachel, look, Rachel, look, Rachel, look, Rachel, look, Rachel, 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 are we here, are we here to make bad investments? Is no, that what guys, you're guys, I personally think that when somebody comes in with an opportunity like that, what you've tried to do is you know that that is not a key opportunity for investment. And for me, you two guys did try and leverage that. Absolutely because you know it's wrong. not a complete Absolutely article. Wrong. William, you didn't, you didn't spend long dismissing the offer you had up there. As far as I'm concerned, that's a ridiculous offer for a, a company that's got clear potential. I think the, the difficulty that I had was explaining that some of the, the technical things and that there's so much around the site, and it, it was just hard to communicate all that across to them. So when Doug said, I'll give you half the money for 30%, you really thought he meant... 30% when you got the whole money rather right, than 30%. Right. I, I thought he was going to say 150 for 30%, yeah. which we, we could have discussed, but yeah, for 60%, that's crazy. So it was absolutely no chance and no point in even. We, we, so we weren't even close. Other entrepreneurs who failed to entice the dragons included Victoria Tringham, who brought in her range of funky flip flops. She thought she was breaking new ground. The thing that makes us different to any other flip-flop company is there is not another flip-flop company. But when he heard the price, Peter Jones flipped. 27.95. 27.95. It's not a cheap product, but you're, it's not. You're right, it's not no. Cheap. And Duncan Valentine just couldn't see a good deal. Sometimes you can flip your money into your company and flop it back out at a higher level quite quickly. That's called a flip-flop investment. Mm -hmm. But this is not one. I didn't think anybody put money in this would ever get it back. So there's no return, so I'm out. Wade Boyd Taylor hoped his avant-garde designer jewellery would wow the dragons. It's a luxury lifestyle brand which will allow affluent 30-somethings to show off the hedonistic attitude that they have. The dragons showed a healthy interest. I like bling. My uh, kids like bling. 
But Peter Jones is more interested in style lessons than investing. When people come on and I criticise their dress code and I look at you guys, I actually think, yeah, that's about as cool as it gets. When you guys even stand cool, I mean, if I try to stand cool, I'm sort of... Come on, give it a go. <laughs> Never been done before. And Rachel Elnor wouldn't be charmed by his trinkets. I don't think you're making enough money, it's very niche, and I won't be investing, I'm afraid. Okay. Will Downing thought he'd cracked it when he showed how his cardboard lighter holder attached to cigarette packets. And because of the nature of this product, it is my intention that 10% of all pre-tax profit would go to a cancer charity. But Duncan Bannatyne was not impressed by his charitable motives. Fantastic, Will. Thank you Fantastic. very much. Fantastic. Thank you. Invent something that encourages people to smoke and then give 10% of your profit to a charity for cancer. Will's bid for investment was soon stubbed out. I'm afraid I'm with Duncan. I won't be investing either. Um, I'm out. It's just not for me. But Duncan Bannatyne had the final word. So to sum up, you get no money, goodbye. Now, the Dragons are putting their own cash on the line when they invest in the Den, so don't be surprised if they're pretty fussy about who gets their money. Will Shazagar from Middlesex convince them he's a safe bet? He's after £110,000. Hi, my name is Shaz and I'm the Managing Director of EliteSports.co.uk and we are premier suppliers of quality nutritional supplements. The type of products we sell are protein powders, protein bars, meal replacement sachets, vitamins and minerals, all by various different brands. Uh, we sell our products to wholesale customers which include gymnasiums and health clubs and we also sell directly to individual consumers via our website and mail order catalogue. Now the business proposal I have for you today is that I will be starting my own supplement brand similar to the brands I currently sell uh, by the name of Elite Sports Nutrition. Elite Sports Nutrition will be partnered with my existing business which will act as a vehicle to distribute and sell the new brand. Thank you. Shazza Gar needs £110,000 to launch his own brand of fitness supplements, powders and health bars. Chaz, you said you um, sell the product. Yeah. And you also said you're on the, your pitch, and you distinguish, which is great, between gymnasiums and health clubs. Yeah. Tell me what the difference is. Um, I regard a gymnasium as more, more of the old school kind of um, hardcore type places, um, where literally you walk in, you've got uh, free weights there and, and a bench, pretty hardcore equipment, as opposed to a health club, where you've got a nice spa, swimming pool, all those type of okay. things. And where do you see your main customer base, in the gyms or the health clubs? It's more, at, currently it's, uh, and traditionally it's always been the gymnasiums, because they've been more geared towards these type of products, which have um, up until now been regarded as more kind of bodybuilding products. Yeah. And what's the growing market? Health club is the health club, and that, that's where I'm looking to, to market the new brand. Who, who owns uh, the business? I own the business. You own a business 100%? Yeah, 100%. Yeah, uh, in terms of our position within the industry as a distributor, we're, we're one of the, the five largest. Shaz's distribution company seems to be in a strong position. Doug Richard wants to know how much money it's actually making. Um, so Elite Sport is a trading business, correct? It is, yes. Uh, and it's been trading since? For the last three years. Okay, and um, what revenues is it going to have at the end of September? Um, I wouldn't really like to discuss the, the revenue of my existing business, to be honest with you. I'm actually pitching for a, uh, a new brand, which will be a completely new business. Shaz, don't, don't you see that it's totally relevant for us to know what Elite Sport turns over? Because if you're proposing your new company supplies that, we need to know, assess the size of that key customer. Sure, I, I do understand that. So how can you expect us to invest? Okay, Chaz, um, come on, you've got to tell us about yeah. what your plans are, or otherwise we're all wasting our time. Sure. First year, what was turnover? Um, okay. It's public, it's, it's knowledge, it's company's house, it's not difficult. Mm -hmm. Someone who really wants to know, okay, we'll just sure. do a search on the internet. It costs £5 for me to download your figures. 
Shaz's reluctance to talk about the finances of his distribution company is not endearing him to the dragons. Realizing he's risking being sent from the den, Shaz opens up. Year one, what was the turnover? Um, turnover was about 300,000. Year two, turnover? Uh, year two, turnover was about 400,000. And last year? It was about 450, to be honest with you. About 450, and it's good to be honest. And this year, you're going to make how much? At the moment, we're turning over just under half a million pounds. After huge resistance, the Dragons have finally got the answers they're looking for. Shaz's distribution company is doing well, but that isn't part of the deal. Doug Richard wants to make sure he knows exactly what is on offer. What, what would one be investing in? Right, OK, I'm going to be starting a new supplement brand. Yes, I know, but what am I investing in? Am I, inve I can't invest in a brand. product. Am I investing in a company? Yep, into, into okay. a new, new company um, which is offering a new product. And so this, it's a this, new company? Yep. What's it called? Uh, Elite Sports Nutrition. OK. So it doesn't exist yet at all? Uh, not as yet, no. And would it be distributed through this other business? Absolutely. Solely? Yeah. So the only way this product reaches the market is through your existing company? Yeah, it'll be sold to, all products will be sold to elitesports.co.uk, which is the existing business, at 30% markup. It, oh. Well, you've stopped me dead in my tracks. Congratulations. Um, I've never invested in a business where I had to sell to somebody else as a condition of investment. Has it occurred to you that makes for a rather unattractive investment? Uh, possibly. Chaz is asking the Dragons to invest £110,000 in his new fitness supplements, leaving his existing distribution company out of the deal. But not only this, he's insisting the supplements would have to be sold through that distribution company, allowing him to take the lion's share of any profits. Doug Richard is not impressed. I guess I go back to one question. Is, is there an investment opportunity in this business plus these, t these things as a single business entity? Because otherwise, I'm being ripped off. Sure. And I don't take well to I that. understand that. Why okay. shouldn't this product be part of your existing company? Yeah, um, I, I would look at it. I think it's, it is viable to, to look at it, although I wouldn't have the figures um, ready in terms of what I'd, be, what I'd be looking for. It would have to be more uh, a larger investment than £110,000, to be honest. I think that you're uninvestable. It's just not well enough thought out, so I will not be investing at all. By keeping his distribution company and the new supplement company separate, Shaz has completely failed to persuade Doug Richard he's worth investing in. Duncan Bannatyne, who has the largest privately owned health club chain in the UK, sees more problems. The, the competition is fierce. Yeah. There is so many of these on the market. There's a proliferation of them. It's, it's unbelievable mm. what they will do to try and get the contract. Yeah, and absolutely. They'll supply free for three months the product so I can use it, my members can use it, and if we get feedback from the members that say they want it, we can then sell it. You can't compete with that. And, um, so, therefore, and so therefore, I'm not going to invest in it. With his huge health club chain, Duncan Bannatyne would have been an ideal investor for Shaz, so losing him is a major blow. Theo Pafitis also has inside knowledge of the business, but it's not good news for Shaz. About six months ago, I launched a protein bar and protein powders, and I've actually got them into distribution. They're in Waitrose, okay. Lloyd's of Chemist. I have seen them. And they are going to be listed everywhere else. But the reason for telling you this is because I understand the market. And I've got to say, £110,000 is going to get you absolutely nowhere if you want to go out into a distribution channel to launch a product like this. I would have been the perfect investor for you to invest in your distribution business as well as uh, linking in with the product that already exists. I'm afraid the way you presented it has been poor. I will not be investing in you. Shaz, can I just clarify my position? I I'm completely out of this investment. I'm not interested at all. I think you've pitched terribly. Your numbers don't hang together. You've been vague. You've tried to keep information from us. The business model doesn't work. Completely not interested in investing. Chaz has lost four dragons and his bid is on the verge of collapse. Only Peter Jones remains. 
your magazine is better turned out than you are today. And I, I really have an, a, an issue every time I see it. Mm -hmm. Somebody's come and asked me for 100, 200,000 pounds. I really have an issue with regards to presentation. Mm -hmm. so I, I understand. And I don't know why you've just walked on with jeans and a shirt. I just, it bugs me. You know, how important is it to you? Um, it's, it's very important. I, I, don't, I don't really think it is, because I don't think you would have come like that. I think you've come totally unprepared. I, I can't invest in your business. There's absolutely no way. I think the offering to, to put into a business on the back of supplying your current company, mm -hmm. um, I think it's money for old rope. I won't be investing in you. Chaz has blown it. The Dragons could see nothing in the offer he brought into the den. I was immediately to protein powders and bars. I thought, I've just spent a fortune developing those. This would be something I could invest in, join the two together, we're away. Would you invest you in something You just better hope like he doesn't that? sell more bars than you do. Well, I bet he doesn't. Chaz, I guess to them it didn't seem like a great deal. And I, I, I wonder whether Theo, the, the one who's got his own brand, might actually have invested if you had one company, a simple deal, mm. all one. Do you think maybe if you'd structured it differently, you would have got some money? Uh, I think possibly, but then I wouldn't be asking for £110,000. That's why I didn't really want to negotiate here and now for the distribution company, because it's very much a case of £110,000 is nearly not enough, the kind, of, the kind of money that's required to invest in that business. <laughs> Other entrepreneurs who failed to part the Dragons from their cash included David Dunn and Mark Williams, who brought in their jet-propelled surfboard for use when there are no waves to ride. But Duncan Bannertine spotted a flaw. Do not jump waves or wakes a severe injury or death may occur. Yes, it's exactly the same as driving my car. And it got worse when they tried to win over the Dragons with a national newspaper review of their surf ski. Predictably, jet boarding is much harder than it looks, and at 30 miles an hour, my efforts result in a spectacular and somewhat painful head-first dive into the lake. Unimpressed with my technique, the board speeds off in the opposite direction. In the end, it was Peter Jones who sunk the deal. But as a serious business opportunity that's going to give me as an investor returns, this ain't it, and it, I don't even think it's going to be it for you. Eleanor, Elisa and Isabel Beecham came into the den looking for £50,000 for their online art business. Degreeart.com is a website selling, showcasing and promoting contemporary artwork from students and graduates of the UK's leading art universities. The business sounded good until the Dragons heard the investment was for salaries. We are holding down full-time jobs which only enables us to concentrate on degree art at evenings and weekends, which we do to the detriment of our social life at the moment. Peter Jones was having none of it. I just don't get it, the amount of people I keep coming in front of me can actually say I want 50 or 100,000 pounds and I say right okay what are you gonna do with it and they turn around and say it's just to pay for my salary because I want a lifestyle. Kingsley Wright claimed to have revolutionized the internal combustion engine giving more power for less fuel but it seemed to come to the wrong place. I'm the guy, unfortunately, that actually sometimes goes to the wrong part of the car and realises that it's the engine in there. Until one dragon revealed a hidden talent. I am a qualified agricultural vehicle fitter mm -hmm. and engineer. You're barking mad. It's, it's as simple as that. This doesn't work. So Kingsley brought up an expert who had witnessed the engine working, up to a point. How long did you run it on their own road for? For about 10 minutes overall. The whole thing lasted about 10 minutes before it um, failed. Failed? It did fail. That revelation wasn't what the Dragons wanted to hear. I'm out. I'm out. I won't be investing today. I'm out. I'm the last one. I'm out. So to summarise, we're all out. Thank you very much. It's been very entertaining. Remember, when budding entrepreneurs go into the den, it's the dragon's own cash they're after, so the pitch has to be perfect. Can Julie White from Milton Keynes impress them enough? She's after £75,000. My name is Julie White and my company is Truly Madly Baby. Now Truly Madly Baby provides quality, unique 
and practical mother and baby items to mums and babies. And we do this via home parties. Now you picture the scene, a lady will have lots of friends, she'll invite them round for a very sociable evening, a couple of bottles of wine, and a Truly Madly Baby consultant will turn up and she will present to them some of our products. Now this allows them to touch and feel the products and also she'll give them advice on these products as well. We have looked into the size of our market. We know that in the UK this year alone, 700,000 babies will be born. And those babies will want lots of presents buying for them. Now the opportunity in our market, as we see it, is that we haven't yet found anyone else who's doing this. And I do apologise, but I'm actually asking for £75,000 today. So apologies I didn't mention that. Thank you. Julie is prepared to give away 25% of her company for a cash investment to develop and market her party plan baby company. Tell me a little bit about Julie. How did you get to this? I've left school at just turned 16, went straight to work for NatWest Bank for five years. I changed career a couple of times, went into accounts, which I absolutely hated, and then worked at a stainless steel company selling steel for seven years in sales, which was where I discovered what I could do well, I could sell. I then went to work with my husband in his business and then very, very quickly got pregnant with my first child. I worked up two weeks before I had Samuel and then um, afterwards I was back again doing bus business meetings two weeks after I'd had him. But that's me because I'm passionate and I love business and I love working. Um, in March, I turned to my husband and I actually said, I would really love to sell baby products via home parties and I think it could work. Why have you chosen the party plan route and not I mean, have, is your website, can I order on your website? You can, yes. Um, we need to look into, it's not a main route to market, but um, you can order by telephone, yes, absolutely. It's not a problem. So if you have a catalogue... I'm just trying to you. understand why you've gone down the party plan route rather than direct mail route, for example, because I would imagine it's quite easy to buy a list of all these 700,000 baby new mums. Yeah and just mail shot them. Yes, and, and again, you know, perhaps that's an option for us, but the reason we went down the party plan route was mainly because we couldn't find anybody else who was doing the same thing as us. Um, I also believe that as a mum... no one else is doing it because there's no profit in it, there's no money in it. We did actually think this ourselves when we started to look at the idea. We did wonder why someone else hadn't done it. Um, we've done a cash flow projection. OK, well, tell me about what you've done, not what you're projecting. What we've done so far? Yeah. Okay. Um, at the moment, I've done um, about 10 parties um, and we've made about £2,600. Now, the parties were very well organised, so we had about eight ladies um, on average at each party. Um, and their average spend um, went up as far as sort of £25, £30. <laughs> Despite Julie's enthusiasm, such a small-scale business seems unlikely to generate enough cash to interest the dragons. Rachel Elnor wants to know about her plans for the future. So can you tell us what your financial projections are? Yes. Um, at the moment, the, the first year cash flow that we've got, um, we've looked, as I said, based on uh, consultants doing one party a week, uh, average £250. Turnover would be about £760,000. So at the, at the bottom line, with the investment, we're showing a profit of 60, 64,000. And then where does it go year two? Year two turnover um, would be about, uh, I think it was 6 million, um, and profit would be about 1.8 million. How, how do you expect to get up to 6 million? Because that's a huge turnover. Um, well, we've, we've based it on recruiting um, volume of consultants. Um, that's the way that we believe we'll grow the business. How many consultants will you have by then? 500 by the end of year two. Despite only generating £2,600 so far, Julie has huge ambitions for her company and is already predicting a turnover of £6 million in her second year. By then, she believes she'll have 500 consultants working for her. But Duncan Bannatyne isn't convinced. How many consultants do you have now, Julie? I have four working are they consultants. All friends of friends and friends no, of family. No, I'm very excited because they found me via the internet because I've sat and literally posted myself across mother um, websites. I think you know, truly, mother baby, is a great name, but I think your projections are truly madly 
way above anything that you could actually get. Okay. 500 consultants, I think they're a pie in the okay. sky. It's not that scalable, it's not that big. It's a small business which you can run from home and I wish you the best of luck with it, but I'm not going to invest, okay. so I'm out. Duncan Bannatyne doesn't believe that Julie will ever achieve a £6 million turnover with her party plan baby company. Rachel Elnor wants to know how she'd cope if she did. So when you get to your six million year two turnover, how are you gonna how are you gonna handle the logistics? Well, I hope by then we will have grown the company so that we have perhaps a warehousing facility where we can hold stock. I'd like systems so that we can stock manage Is correctly. Is this all costed into your we've, year we've two built plan? yeah we've built the costs in for um, for sort of uh, stock management and um, for systems infrastructure. And who who did that? Was was that you or was that my husband helped me with my business plan? Yes. Right. Julie, is your husband downstairs? Yes, he is, yeah. Do you want to get him up to come and see us? OK, no problem. The Dragons remain unconvinced by Julie's plans for her company and want to talk to her husband, Richard, who she's worked with on her business projections. Richard, uh, do you also believe that this business is going to turn over £6 million in its second year? Um, I think, uh, yes, I do. Um, and I think... Uh, the only thing that's probably not sure in, in our business plan 100% is the, the costings, um, what our costs will, will fully be, because we, that will sort of, you know, um, as, as far as taking a warehousing and things like that as we grow. We've um, guesstimated the costs. Um, <laughs> let me just tell you where I am then. Um, I think that you're overestimating quite radically the number of consultants you can pick up and how quickly you can pick them up. I'm not going to invest because I truly do not believe the six million or anything approaching in the second year. Good luck, Anna. Thank you. Thank you. Despite her husband's input, Doug Richard thinks they're being naive about what it takes to establish a lucrative party plan network. Will Julie be able to convince Rachel Elnor, Peter Jones, or Theo Perfitis that her truly madly baby business has any chance of success? I think the business, the whole party plan business model, is a really difficult one. Yes. And therefore, I think that you couldn't do it on party plan. You'd need to do other things. You'd need to do other channels. You'd need to do mail order, yeah. and you'd need sure. to do web. For me, it's it's really a lifestyle business. It's not scalable. Okay. So I won't be investing. Only two dragons remain, and Julie's bid for investment is in the balance. So far, none of the dragons have been convinced that her baby products business has any hope of success. But Peter Jones has his own ideas. I have to say, I have made up my mind. I can see potential in what you're trying to do, and actually, I've got some ideas with regards to perhaps a completely different strategy to, to what you're thinking. I think that there's a very big piece of action that you can take on the web and I think that you haven't explored even a quarter of the opportunity. So on that basis, I'm going to decide to invest. <sighs> but I would only invest the amount of money that you're asking for if I was able to receive back 50% of the company. <sighs> Despite Julie's baby products business doing nothing for three of the dragons, Peter Jones has offered her the full £75,000 she came for. He sees big opportunities for her business on the internet, but in return for his contacts and expertise, he wants 50% of her company, double the amount she wanted to give away. Theo Perfitas is also intrigued. I've got a few ideas, but you do need to radically change your model for it to work. On that basis, I'm actually going to offer to give you the money, just for a mere 47.5%. Oh, gosh. Theo Perfitis has his own ideas about where the company can go, and determined to win the deal has undercut Peter Jones. He's prepared to accept 47.5% of the company for his £75,000 but Peter Jones is not happy. I've got a slight issue. I mean, one of my issues that obviously <laughs> Theo trying to, to get in on my action, <laughs> which I have to say um, disappoints me slightly. If I was to offer you 
a deal at 45%, would you accept me over Theo? Peter Jones is now offering to take 2.5% less of her company than Theo Pafitis. With two offers on the table, Julie has some questions of her own. Um, Peter, just one other thing. Would you tell me more about the um, products and things that are in your group of companies? We control, or I've looked after, something in the region of four or five of the biggest companies in this country where we have developed their websites and we handle all their fulfilment as well out of our distribution centre. One of the companies in particular is one of the world's largest companies and we handle all of their web fulfilment in this country. Okay. But I too do many tens of millions of pounds of business on the internet. And if I was to be involved in your business, I'd be using that expertise, that skill, that distribution centre to expand the web and other areas, which I'm not going to share right now, <laughs> as to where I think the business should be I was it slightly redirected and refocused. But I want you to think about actually that two and a half percent that I'm offering slightly less than Theo could be worth quite a lot a more lot money, money when you're talking of exits. Yeah, sure. I didn't, I didn't um, imagine I'd ever get this far, to be perfectly honest with you, but now I'm here, it's fantastic, and it's even more fantastic that I've got two dragons who want to invest. I, ha I have to say that if I have a real gut feeling, and I've gone on gut feeling a lot in my life, and luckily I haven't been too wrong, um, I would go with Peter. I really didn't particularly want to give as much as 45%. I don't know if you'll consider 40 but you already said you're going to go with me okay. at 45. So <laughs> let's shake hands at 45 and let's get the business going in the next 10 minutes. We got a deal? Yeah. Yeah, go on. Well done. <laughs> well done. Oh, I see that. High pressure stuff, you've done really well. Julie White has tamed the dragons and secured the £75,000 she came for from Peter Jones. Well done. Thank you very much. I'm, I'm not sure whether to offer you congratulations or condolences, Peter. <laughs> I free, think Peter, free baby supplies. you negotiated a, a great deal there. Children are close to my heart, so it'll be a... Of course. Oh, this is it'll just free investment. baby goods You're for the so next nice, year. Phew. <laughs> So, are you happy? I'm absolutely delighted, yes. Absolutely delighted. Now, it sounds to me like uh, Peter's going to make this a rather different business to the one you pitched, isn't it? It's going to yes. be a web business, not a party business, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. I mean, who's to say we can't still do the parties? Um, I wouldn't perhaps want to lose that completely, but um, we need to make a successful business, and uh, he sounds to me like the guy who would help us do that. Did you think you were going to get it, say, halfway through? No, there? I didn't at all. Um, I, I felt like it was very negative on the party plan side. You know, how would we get the consultants? What money would we make? It would cost us much more than we thought it would. Um, and I think it's nice they've taken the idea, the concept and us, and they've thought of another way that they can make our business mm. successful, and Good. that's fantastic. You've got some, uh, some big help there. Yeah. Well done. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. What an unpredictable day in the dragon's den. Most of the entrepreneurs were scorched by the usual ruthlessness of the dragons, but not Julie White. She dangled her baby products business in front of them and closed a deal for £75,000. Has she uncovered a softer side to the fearsome dragons? Goodbye. Next time on Dragon's Den. I'm not asking you for money. You're asking me for money. I can never see this becoming a successful product. I would rather stick pins in my eyes and invest in this. That's at the same time, 8 o'clock next Tuesday. Now, proof that money doesn't make you happy. BBC Two meets a lottery millionaire S and our experts share the real secrets of a satisfying life. Making Slough happy in a moment here on BBC Two.